Hi. One of my favourite uh, habitats for wildlife uh, is the hay meadow. Um, Britain used to have about seven million acres of hay meadows. It was a really common habitat. Um, uh, found all over Britain um, and used to, to grow hay, fairly obviously. Um, for, for centuries, farmers needed hay as a winter fodder for livestock. And so they would have hay meadows set aside, which would be cut once a year for the hay and the hay would be stored to feed to cattle, horses and other livestock over the winter when the grass isn't growing. Um, and so the, the hay meadows are just cut once a year, perhaps grazed a little bit in the autumn or early spring. And that management went on for hundreds and hundreds of years, probably thousands of years in some cases. And slowly over time, this beautiful flora developed. The soils tend to be fairly uh, low in nutrients because the hay is being removed every year and historically wasn't being replaced with uh, synthetic fertilizers. And uh, there's, there's a, a wonderful flora, often dominated by legumes, plants, uh, pea family plants that are able to fix their own uh, nitrogen and so therefore can thrive in soils that are low in, in nitrates, low in fertility. So plants like uh, vetches and trefoils and clovers uh, tend to be common. And also a feature of these meadows is that they are, they're often um, rich in yellow rattle, which is a semi-parasitic plant which um, sucks the energy from grasses and leaves more room for flowering plants. Anyway, these, these habitats are um, rather beautiful. Uh, I'm sitting in one right now, uh, full of flowers, um, a really ancient um, species-rich grassland of this type. Um, can have as many as 40 different plant species in a square meter. Um, uh, and that supports a huge diversity of, of other wildlife, of insects. Great habitat for bumblebees, particularly rare bumblebees. Um, in fact, the reason bumblebees such as the shrill carder bumblebee and the brown banded carder bumblebee uh, are rare is because they live primarily in, in these flower rich grasslands like hay meadows. And sadly, in the 20th century, we destroyed 97% of, of our hay meadows, our species-rich grasslands, um, mainly because um, farmers switched to using silage for winter fodder. Um, silage is just to easy, silage fields are usually um, sown with a monoculture of ryegrass, lots of fertilizer applied, and they grow really fast. You can cut it four, five, six times a year. Um, bale it up in those big black sacks and it kind of ferments and makes a, a kind of like kimchi for cows that uh, they can eat all through the winter and you get a much bigger yield of silage from a silage field than you do hay from a hay field. Um, which is why, logically enough, farmers abandoned their hay meadows, plowed them up, reseeded them with ryegrass and switched to silage. Um, but it made sense from a farming point of view, but was disastrous for all the wildlife associated with hay meadows. Good news is um, that it's possible to recreate them. Um, and there are lots of really cool projects dotted around the UK where people are uh, re-sowing uh, wildflower meadows. And this is, this is one such example I'm sitting in here. It's a, it's a mile or so from my house. Um, it's a, a field that was re-sown with a, a meadow mix a few years ago. And it's not as biodiverse as an ancient hay meadow. Uh, maybe it will be in 100 years or 200 years, but it's still pretty cool. And it's, it's, it's really heartening that it's possible to, to uh, restore or recreate these habitats wherever someone has time and inclination and a bit of money for the seed. So let's, I'm gonna have a squiz around. Uh, we're gonna go on a, a little flower and bug hunt and see what we can find in this amazing habitat. So amongst the commonest plants in this meadow, bird's foot trefoil, uh, a lovely member of the pea family and a favorite uh, with many bumblebees, the flowers, and also the food plant of common blue butterflies. 
And then mixed up here, we've also got some red clover, which is another member of the same family. Has really high protein pollen, which uh, bumblebees love. And it's a real favorite of some of our rarest bumblebees. Let's see what else we can find. The main butterfly on the wing at the moment is the meadow brown. There's dozens of them flying around here. They, uh, the males just endlessly fly and fly. Uh, they'll whiz past. The females are more sedentary. Uh, so there's a female. Maybe we can... So she's feeding on uh, some common knapweed, uh, which is another classic. Oh, there she goes. Didn't get a good look at her, but uh, one of our... Actually, probably Britain's commonest butterfly. But it's still lovely to see. Uh, let's have a look at the knapweed. Look at this beautiful flower. This is a member of the, the daisy family, the Asteraceae, classic meadow plant that flowers in July. Gorgeous. And here's a, a common carder bumblebee enjoying the bird's foot trefoil. It's a, a pretty easy to identify, it's an all brown bee with a few dark hairs usually on the abdomen and uh, there are a couple of very rare species like the brown banded carder which look similar. Probably too far away for you to see but uh, there's a kestrel it was just hovering and now it's flying along above the hedge there. One of the features of this meadow that I love to see are the swallows and house martins that swoop by. I uh, will no doubt see one in a second. I can see some in, there's a martin over there couple of them um, which of course are insect feeding birds and uh, uh, insect feeding birds have not fared well in recent years but these meadows are so rich in insects that they they draw in any uh, house martins or swallows or swifts that are in the area and they swoop around hoovering up the uh, the flies and so on lots of honeybees here today there's one Guess somebody's got some hives nearby. Ah, here's a burnet moth. Another um, lepidopteran that lays its eggs on bird's foot trefoil. And a gorgeous day flying red and black moth. I can't tell you whether it's a five spot or a six spot yet. They're very similar and it's not sitting still. But uh, let's follow it anyway. Um, I love these little critters. Oh, there we go. See if we can get close. There she's not being obliging. See it? Oh, there we go. See some grasshoppers hopping away as well. Oh, she's off again. <laughs> oh, there's another one incoming. Fantastic. The reason they're brightly coloured is they uh, store. Um, toxins from the bird's foot trefoil which contains cyanide I believe and they store it in their tissues and then advertise that they're poisonous so that birds don't uh, try to eat them. Quite a common strategy in day flying moths. There's a leaf cutter, solitary bee. I can't tell you which species it is. Hard to get a good focus on her. These yellow flowers, you might think that's bird's foot trefoil again, but that's actually meadow vetchling, which is a scrambling, climbing uh, relative of bird's foot trefoil. Really a favorite um, flower for longhorn bees, which I don't think occur here, but I, I live in hope. They're a rather rare species. Now look down here, there is a female. Um, Female meadow brown, 
right in front of us. My demon dog has just appeared. Poppy, don't disturb the butterfly. Poppy dog, what you up to? I just love the grasshoppers. I don't know whether you can hear them in the background, but there's male grasshoppers of several different species singing away. If you walk through the grass, they just hop away in front of you. It's a, sadly not a common sight anymore, but wonderful to see. They're such endearing little things. This is a female, uh, which a uh, female meadow grasshopper from memory. They have short wings. I'll check that when I get back. Anyway, uh, gorgeous little creatures. I used to spend many a happy hour as a kid catching grasshoppers in my hands along with my school chums. Sadly, I guess most kids don't get to do that anymore. A month ago, this meadow was awash with buttercups. It was just bright yellow. Most of them have gone to seed now, but a uh, few little stragglers with the petals dropping off. This is a uh, ribwort plantain, a, a classic meadow plant seems to be a hoverfly on the underside. I can't quite tell what's going on here. Yeah, not sure. I think that's a fly. It's been infected with a, a fungus. It's dead, with fungi erupting out of it. When, just before they die, flies infected with these fungi perch somewhere high so that, and then die and the reason for being high is that so that they can rain the fungal spores down on the and any other insects in the landscape which then become infected themselves. What a fate. Oxide daisy. White clover has a shallower flowers than red clover, so it tends to be visited by shorter-tongued bumblebees and honeybees compared to those that like red clover. Here's the yellow rattle I mentioned earlier. It's, um, some of it's still flowering. It's rather nice. Yellow flower, deep tubular flower visited by uh, longer-tongued bumblebees again, like red clover. But when it sets seed, it produces these rattly cases with loose seeds inside. Farmers used to know it was time to harvest the hay when the, when the yellow rattle rattled and inside. Yellow rattle's unusual for a meadow plant because it's, uh, where are the seeds? Now oh, there's a seed, look, in the palm of my hand. Uh, there's these, this flat disc-shaped seed. Um, yellow rattle's unusual in, in that it's an annual. Most of these plants you can see here are perennials. But uh, rattle needs a, needs a frost over the winter on the seeds um, to make them germinate. And, uh, and then they, they germinate in the spring and grow very fast and help to, as I explained earlier, to create these beautiful meadows. Uh, there we have a gatekeeper. Oh, it's having a fight with a meadow brown now. Oh, there we go. Just settled. So, meadow browns and gatekeepers are similar looking, both members of the same family. Oh, it's disappeared off. Uh, gatekeepers usually come out slightly later, but they, they overlap, both on the wing at the moment in early July. Here's a, a garden bumblebee, Bombus hortorum, a really long-tongued species that likes to visit red clover. Off she goes. 
This is Meadow Crane's Bill, a geranium family plant called Crane's Bill. It's probably fairly obvious why. Look at that seed. It looks like the head of a, a crane with its long beak. And, uh, actually one of my favourite meadow flowers, these. I just love the colour of them. Glorious. You can grow these in your garden easily enough. Even a small couple of square metres of long meadow in a garden, if you can set aside a little bit of your lawn, sow it with a wildflower meadow mix. Uh, we've recently done some research at Sussex showing that um, uh, even a, a two by two metre square in a garden um, has, uh, it will result in a big uptick in the number of pollinating insects you find in your garden. So uh, you don't need much space to make your own mini meadow. Another classic meadow plant, a uh, lady's bed straw. Used to be used to stuff mattresses, hence the name. Hand of the Baskervilles is coming. Uh, there's a couple of small skippers. Uh, they separated, I'll try to. Lovely little butterflies. It's on that red clover there, I don't know whether you can see it. So they sit with their wings kind of at a funny, in a funny position, different to other butterflies. Slightly moth-like butterflies. I hope that one's in focus. They're very, rather adorable little critters, these. Oh, off she goes. I hope you enjoyed that. I could hunt around here all day and probably will, but uh, uh, I guess the take home message is that these are really precious habitats that, uh, uh, and where our ancient hay meadows survive, we should um, consider it the, the highest priority to, to protect and look after those, make sure we don't lose any of the last few. And also, we should be wherever a bit of land becomes available. Um, and however, if the owner is so inclined, then um, we should be restoring a few of them dotted across the countryside to provide a, a series of little refuges for, for nature. Um, if you get the chance, come and just sit in a meadow like this and listen to the insects, the grasshoppers chirping away and watch the bumblebees buzzing about and the butterflies flitting by and the Swallows overhead, there's a beautiful dragonfly just shot past. <laughs> uh, and do your bit. Um, uh, if you're lucky enough to have a, a bit of land of your own, think about recreating one of these wonderful meadows. What better use for your land could there be? Okay, take care. See you soon.